Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Koto Sokoto Burika Nama Shikataba. Babo Go Sokoto Burika Tasikataba. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father, that your name be glorified. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We still have three days to go. Today is our 18th day in our praying. God bless you. Ah, Kanama Shikotobo. La Bagasi Kataba. Rakoto Sokotobo. In the name of Jesus. We give you all glory and adoration. We worship you. Let's come together. Please, can we share this on our walls? Invite your friends and families. Let's give glory to the holy name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for who you are. Thank you for what you are doing. We magnify you, O oh Lord. We reverence you. O oh, Karabasi Kataba. We bless you for you are greater than the greatest, and you are mightier than the mightiest. Omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience, God. I am that I am, ancient of days. Thank him for life. Thank him for healing, for prosperity. Thank him for advancement. Thank him for who he is. Thank him for the will that he has concerning us. Oh, yes, Lord. Makutu Sakataba. He said that he's going, he, he's going to give us an expected end. If I know the thought I think towards you, thought of good and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So your end shall be expected. Your end shall greatly increase. It must become what you have proposed in your heart. God knows the heart, the heart, your heart desires, and he will bring you to that place. In the name of Jesus, we are talking about taking territories today. Taking territories in your own life, taking territories that the devil has stolen, we are going to take it back today by the authority and the power. And we are going to pray and God will grant us all of that, the ability to do it by the authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Rabbi Gashika Taba, a word from God will change your life today. One word. You don't need much, but just one word that God is going to put in your heart. Your life will begin to transform and all inabilities will become ability. God is a God of all possibilities. There is nothing that is too hard for him to do. He asks us, he says, is there anything too hard for me to do? Say, I'm the God that owned the ship of a thousand hills. Silver is mine, gold is mine. So one of those things, we need them. We need gold and silver. God say, I have them. I have them in abundance. He say, I am the God of all flesh. In the name of Jesus Christ, have your way, O Lord. Have your way, Father. Have your way that your name be glorified. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for who you represent. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you, Lord, Father, for life. Thank you for advancement. Lord, we ask for peace, and you gave us peace in America, even towards the transition and the, the election. Everything has gone in your own way. The devil cannot take any glory. We give you all adoration. We thank you, Lord, Father, for we are seeing the end of this COVID. We have seen it and it's going to come. The vaccine is here, but we are not depending on the vaccine. We know that you have put a date to end this COVID. So this year is that year that all these things will be behind us. We glorify you that we shall not be consumed by this devilish and evil illness. In every sickness of respiratory, we cancel it in our life. Every form of sickness and infirmity, we cast them out in the name of Jesus. For the Bible says, for you give them power and authority to heal and to cast out devils. So the healing power is given to us. We have it. We worship you, O oh Lord. We exalt you, we magnify you. We give you all glory and adoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory be to that holy name, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says, the entrance of the world giveth light and understanding to the simple. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we have been speaking and hearing now not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory to thy holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The word is taking territory. I want us to go to the Bible. God, every time God gives us a word, he, he has a territory in view. So, ah, lekata sokotobo, makata rabashikataba, rekoto sokotobo, likana mamama. Mazoko Torobo, 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. So Genesis chapter 1, look at verse 26, and we read down to 28. I just want to use it as a reference point. That's not where we are going today. Genesis 20, chapter 1, 26, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion. So the intention of God that man is going to be a dominant force over the fishes of the sea. So man will dominate everything from the water. And over the fowls of the air, man will dominate the air atmosphere. And over the cattle, everything that will, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. So the, 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 the three um, dimensions of man domination shall be in the atmosphere, in the sea, and in the, in the land. In verse 27, so God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created him. Male and female created he them. And in verse 28, God blessed them. But I want you to see the scope of man influence. The Bible says God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply. So you cannot multiply if you are not fruitful. So the, 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 the goal, the, 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 the goal of fruitfulness is multiplication. The goal of life is to multiply, to, to, to be fruitful. But if you are not fruitful, you cannot multiply. And God said replenish. So replenishing is your multiplication now has begun to cause, you know, you are beginning to expand. So you are replenishing not just where you started to multiply, but God said replenish the earth. That means you have to spread around, spread and subdue it and have dominion. And God repeated what he said before, over the fishes of the seas and over the fowls of the air and over every living thing that move upon the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Makoto Sokotobo. So when that happened, man now was a force to record with. We know the rest of the story, how the devil came and stole what was given to man and man lost that territory. In, in Genesis chapter 3, the devil came with a lie, with a big lie, and stole that, that, that nature of man. But another group of people emerged. In Genesis 11, that's where we are going now. That's where I want us to focus. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 11, there were people that came out and they began to, you know, think about something that they would do. And when those men emerged in Genesis 11, the Bible said, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Sinai and dwelt there. So they found a place that looked, wow, this place is beautiful. So they dwelt there in verse three. And they said one to another, go, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had bricks for stone and slims had there for mortars, verse four. And they said, go, let us build. That's where we're going now. We are going to take territories back. When you are building, you are building in a place. Let us build us. I want you to mark how many us in this verse for. Let us, one, build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us, two, three, make us a name. For us is there. So it's all about them. Least we scatter abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So this is their own goal. Their goal is, well, this place is so beautiful. In Sinai, where they saw. We are going to concentrate our energy and everything in one place. And we are going to build upward. Why the, the word of God, the child that God gave man, he said, God says, spread, spread. But man said, I'm not going to spread. I want to come up. A tower that will reach the heavens. And verse 5, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men built. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and they begin to do, and this that they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. I want you to look at this sentence. For the first time in the whole of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, God was... God was, um, or when I say God was threatened, because God said the, the people are one and they have one language. And this they begin to imagine, there's nothing they begin to imagine to do will be restrained from them. 
Nothing. He said nothing. So in, in, the, in the context of what we had in verse 6, these people had it all. They speak with one voice. And the Bible said, verse 7, and God said, let us go down and they confirm their language that they may not understand one another. And we know the rest. And the Lord scattered them abroad from tents upon the faces of all the earth and they left off the building to build the city. So they stopped building. But I want you to see, it's not that God hates cities. Or God hates men building house. The earth was so big. The intention of God was not for us to concentrate in one place. God wants us to spread. Abroad. But these people say, well, we are not going to do one thing possible. We have to do our own. And one, the, the, the imagination of their heart was not right from the beginning. Because if you look at verse 4, they said to themselves, let us build us a city. The city is their own. The building is going to be their own. And a tower will stop will reach unto heaven and let us make a name for ourselves. They want to make a name. God was not part of it. The city is going to be their own and they will stay in one place. We don't want to scatter. We don't want to lose anybody. We have to build until we get to the heavens. So everybody will concentrate all our money. Everything is going to be one place. It's a good idea. If you look at it, the master plan is good. But that is not the plan of God. So sometimes we can have a great idea. If God is not part of it, it will not work. Sometimes Christians will think, God likes cities. You will see that God allowed other men to build mega cities, build big houses. But it must the goal must be not for you to concentrate. It has to affect somebody's life. Let's now go forward. Genesis chapter 12. The next chapter from chapter 11. Now God is telling another man to go to a city. He stopped people in chapter 11 to, of building a city. But look at what God said in Genesis chapter 12. And now the Lord had said unto Abraham, get out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show thee and I will make thee a great nation. So the greatness that the other people were looking for, God is begging another man and say, I will make you great. The other people say, we are going to make a great name for ourselves. Now this God is calling another person, say, get out and I will make you a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt become a blessing. Hallelujah. I will bless them that bless thee and curse every man that curseth thee. And indeed, that shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And if you look at verse 4, then Abraham departed. Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Aaron. And if you look at verse 5, I want us to get to 7. And the Bible says, Abraham took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance and that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of the Canaan they came. Verse 6. And Abraham passed through the land into the place of Shechem, onto the plain of Moreh. And the Canaanite was there in the land. In verse 7 now, God appeared to him again. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto him, Thy seed will I give this land. You know, the first time he appeared, he said, Go. He sent him. He said, Go to a place. I will show you. There was no place. Abraham was still wandering in the wilderness. So when he got to a place, God said, Wow. In this land, I will give it to your seed. In verse 7. The Bible said, Thy seed will I give this land. And they build an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto them. So you can now see that it was the same God that appeared to him in verse 1. Say, get out. But that God was a sender. He sent them. Go out to a place I will, I will show you. So they began to wander, following the instructions of the God. But in verse 7, God appeared to them as a territorial authority. The Bible says, and the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto and, and said to him, unto thy seed will I give this land. So now, God is not talking about somewhere. This land you are standing upon. So when he said it, Abraham took the land immediately by raising an altar. Many of us have reached to a place that God has given to us. That does not mean that if God has given you a land, 
that the Lord will begin to bless you immediately. We will see what happened. Abraham lost everything in that land. And sometimes that you lose something in the place doesn't mean that God has not given it to you. God said, unto thy seed that we give this land. Wow. So that God now is a territorial God, a landowner, a landlord. Abraham quickly raised an altar immediately in that land. If this land is mine, I have to put a lien on it. Spiritual lien. Many times, a lot of Christians, we just don't understand how to raise altars and how to fortify altars. We can raise altar. Abraham raised two altars in two verses. Let's go to the next verse. In verse 7, the Bible says he raised an altar unto the Lord that appeared unto him. In verse 8 now, and he moved from tents. He moved out of the place he raised an altar unto the mountain on the east of Bethel. He went towards Bethel and pitched his tents there, having Bethel on the west and high on the east. So he was in between Bethel and high, but he was closer to Bethel. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. So in verse 7, when God said, ah, I will bring you your seed to this land, he doesn't have a child yet. God said, I'm going to give this land to your children. He put an altar there immediately for God. And he moved his tent again. Now he's going close to Bethel. And when he got there, he pitched in that place and rested there. And he put another altar. Before we know the story, how he lost everything. If you go to verse 9, and Abraham Johnny, Johnny going on still towards the south. And there was famine in verse 10. He lost everything. The moment he lost everything, then he has to make plans to, to go to another country. But now he is leaving two altars behind. The one that he raised in Canaan and the altar that he has raised in Bethel. But you will see that those altars will not die. Because everything that was spoken concerning that altar is still alive. And many of us, our ancestors have died 300 years. The altars that they raised, we don't even have a physical altar in our families. But some of those altars are still speaking against us. The only way to overcome or override that altar is to take that place, that family land again, that house where you grew up or where you were born, in the spirit and raise another altar to override the altar that were there. Because you don't know what was said and you don't want to start to speculate. We have a higher power now. The name of Jesus, the Bible says, is a strong tower. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. So you go and put the name of the Lord. It doesn't matter where it is because you are there. I don't want to speculate whether some, the land is so good or not. Because I am here, I take this land by fire, by force. I possess this land by the authority and the power. God told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 5, he said, whatever the soul of your feet shall tread upon, I have given unto you for possession. So there are three lands in everybody's life. There's a land of your nativity where you are born, and there's a land of your possession, and there's a land of your inheritance. The way you are born, you don't determine that. But the one you possess, you will determine how to possess a land. And the land of your inheritance you sometimes you don't determine that, but based on your affiliation in a family, either by birth or by adoption, you can inherit this. So by adoption, we are called the sons of God. So every land we are, so one land, the same land, can be three of these things to you. Or it can be multiple lands. You can be born in a place and you grow all your life in that place. You have to take that land back, even though you are born there, you have to take it as the land of your in a possession. You possess the land by taking it in the spirit through raising an altar and invoking the mystery of the blood into that land. And after a while, that same land can become your land of inheritance, that the land will start to throw things at you, things you didn't even desire or want because you own the land. You, you have inherited the land. So all the goods of the land, will begin to come to you. Isaiah chapter 1, the Bible said, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the what? The good of the land. You shall eat it. Every land had some good things in it. But we must take it in the spirit. Taking territories. So Abraham understand territorial demands and how to take territories. 
So the moment God mentioned to his ears that in this land I will bring your children, he didn't wait for his children to come. He put an altar there and took put a lien. There's a way you can put a spiritual lien in a property. There's a property, one of my friends, that was many years ago, I think 2010 or 11. He came to me and said he wanted to buy a house, but he never qualified for the house. But because he has been to the house, he loved the house. The house was for sale, but the house was totally out of his reach. His credit cannot carry it and his resources cannot carry it. It's about a million something dollar for the house. He don't even have 10,000 to his name then. He said he won the house. So I said, how can you be wanting this thing? This has a tall dream, but if you can go with God, you can be in that house. So we prayed and he went to the house and took sand from that land and came and we began to pray. And we prayed and we raised an altar in that sand of the house. And he went back and poured. Fast forward about five years from then. He became this big and great. Lo and behold, that house was still there. there nobody could buy the house. He bought the house and went and lived in the house. And even then, he still did not qualify with all the crediting and the rigors. But because there was a spiritual lien, the bank, when they were closing, they told him that people have offered more than what he offered. But they didn't know why they, they didn't close. But when he came, they were tired of seeing people. They just said, give him the house. That house had been taken in the spirit more than five years ago. He put a lien, that, that altar he raised in the property. It's a spiritual lien. He put a lien there. Even though he's not, he doesn't have the qualification to take the house there. But this house, nobody will buy it until I'm buoyant enough to take it. So what Abraham did, because the Canaanite was still in the land, they live in land. He was just passing by. And God spoke to him, said, this land, your children will come here in the future to live. By this time, Abraham had no child. So Abraham could have been, say, well, when that time comes. But he did not wait for him to have a child. The Bible says he took an altar. He built an altar there. And he raised it for God and put blood there. The covenant is not complete until there's blood invoked in it. So he did that, and do you know that it didn't take time. The next verse, Abraham was on his journey again, going down south, and he came to Bethel. Between Bethel and I, he stayed in the middle of, close to Bethel by the mountain. He raised another altar there. And he began to move again. By the time he got down south further, famine came and he lost everything. And some people now, when, if, you, if, you, if you are not discerning in the spirit, and you begin to walk with God in that way. And when you lose everything, somebody will say, if God told me to leave my father's house, why is it that since I left, I came here, things have not worked for me? Somebody will begin to blame God. But Abraham has paid down payment for that land that his children will come and inherit tomorrow. By the time he was raising that altar, the land was for him, the land of his possession. But later, his children will come and get that land for free. It will become to them the land of their inheritance. Hallelujah. We know the story. After 400 days, they came back and they lived in that land. Even though their father has already put an altar. We knew what happened when Jacob was running away from his brother. Genesis 28, that he came to that battle and slept in that altar. He didn't know. The Bible says he took a stone and slept. And that same night, the angels began to ascend and descend. And when he woke up, he said, the Lord is in this place, but I knew it not. That was the altar of his grandfather. That was their land. They have taken that land in the spirit. They have possessed it. So I don't know what territory you are occupying. Maybe you are in a particular business, and there are other businesses that are similar business that are around you, or you are in ministry, and there are ministries around you. It does, it's time that we tell, but time will not tell if you did not do anything. When you talk about time, you must be doing something for time to work for you. If you just say, well, don't worry. Since I'm here, over time, I, I, no, you can't just wish things to happen. You begin to systematically, practically, constantly begin to do something to take over. Is it your family? And you, you are born there, you know that something is wrong, right? Don't just wish that the things go away. Demons don't go away like that. Altars don't, don't just get destroyed. You have to physically, Consciously, constantly destroy them. And you don't just destroy an altar because when you cast demons out, 
They will go and come back to check the house if it's empty. When you cast them out, you raise another altar. Somebody have to occupy that land in the spirit. You have to raise it to the to God Almighty. So that when the demons and the devils that are, have left there, or territorial authorities, when they come back, they will see the angels of God at guard, guiding that, because they won't come back anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ. So we have to begin to take territories back. Makoto Rakataba. We talked about city. Abraham will later become the city that he was looking for. If you look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 9 and 10, the Bible says, by faith, we see talking about Abraham. He sojourned in the land of promise. The land was the land of promise. As a stranger in that country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heir with him of the same promise. Abraham was living in that land in verse 9 here as a stranger. But even though his children will inherit the land, look at verse 10 now. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. He was looking for a city and a foundation which the builder and the maker is God. You remember I told you when we started in Genesis chapter 11, these people were trying to build a city for themselves. But Abraham was not trying to build a city for himself. He was looking for a city that the builder and the maker is called. God will later use him to build that city. But he never gave any credit to himself. The first group said, let us make for ourselves bricks and mortar. And let us build a city for ourselves. And let us make a name for ourselves. It is all about them. And they wanted to break the golden rule that God said, spread abroad, cover the whole earth. But they say, we are not going to cover anywhere. We want to stay in one place and build that tower to be very tall. That was against the, the law and the, the formation and what God has commanded man to do. Sometimes you can have a great and wonderful idea, but if it is not in, 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 in tandem or it does not sync with the will of God, it will not come to pass. It might be a great idea. It might not even be out of sin. These people were saying those things. Probably they were not proud people. They just want to have their families around them. They don't want to scatter. But God said, no, my intention is that you scatter. You can't all build in one place. You must scatter. So when they began to build that tower, God did not stop them because God hates towers or God hates the city. God wanted them to build cities, not one city. Every child of God is a city. The Bible says a city on top of a hill cannot be hidden. We are cities in us because every person you see have four generations in them. Every human being have four generations in them. And that is a city. Until we begin to see ourselves like that, we cannot fulfill the will of God. So many of us will begin to, from today, take back the territories that the devil has taken from us. When God was telling Abraham about the land of Canaan, God knew that they were Canaanites there. He knew that the Jebusites and the Perizzites are living in that land. He didn't care. He said, this land, your children will come back and own the land. Not just live here, but they will come back to be the land owners. Abraham did not want that, that prophecy. to even the, 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 the word of God to even dry up. As he woke up that morning, he raised an altar. He raised an altar in that land. A land that he will leave Maybe the next day to go somewhere else. But he put a lien on the land. A lot of Christians, they have had good prophecies. But we did not receive it. I tell you about receiving is as important as, as, as the, 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 the giving of the prophecy. Everything in life, the way you receive it, is even much important than the, the, the word that you got. I remember when Jesus was talking to the, the, the disciples in Luke chapter 10. He said, when you get to a place, get to a house, what you say to them is, peace be unto this house. And if the son of peace is there, the peace of God will remain. But if the son of peace is not there, the peace will come back. It will go with you. So if Abraham have had in this land, your children, or your seed, will come back to own it. And he just walked away. Maybe the children of Israel will never get that land. But whatever spirit that to him 
He knew that this is not something I will take for granted. I will not just do something, but I'm going to make something that will be everlasting. I will speak into the land. I will put an offering in that land. I will put blood. Because every covenant must be fortified with blood. That's why the Bible says by the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, that blood becomes the covenant of the new covenant in our lives. The covenant of life and prosperity is in the blood of Jesus Christ. So whatever you are doing and God is speaking to you now, that land can be the land of your possession. And that God has given you a land does not mean that you will be the one to live in that land. Because many of us, we are thinking self. God might be talking to you about your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, that you will never be alive to see. But why not pave the way for them? That tomorrow when they come back, they will not have generational causes and, and forces following them, pursuing them everywhere. Because you have altered the old foundation and you have raised a new foundation for them. A foundation that will be for prosperity. Maybe your life, Abraham never built a house in his lifetime. He lived in tents all his life. But today his children can go and inherit houses that they did not build. Remember when they left Egypt and came to the land of Canaan? and took the land of Canaan by war. The people that lived in the land have houses. So the children of Israel inherited houses and farms that they did not plant, vineyards, businesses. It was the sacrifice of Abraham that gave them that thing. It's not about what they did. It's not even about Joshua that brought them into the land or Moses that took them out of the land of Egypt. It was the word of God when Abraham received that prophecy he raised an altar to take the land, to possess the land, to be part of that land, even though he was a stranger in that land. I think somebody's eyes of understanding will begin to open now. You begin to understand that when God is speaking, God is speaking in phases. Prophecies come in different phases. And you have to understand what phase of this prophecy is it now and which one is to go. And sometimes all the prophecies of your life will never be in your lifetime. But you are going to be a foundation that will propel the next generation and the next generation and the next generation to have a better life. But you must take those territories for God. Every time God is calling a man, a woman, a person, a nation, a community, God has a, a territory in view. God cannot call you in isolation. He calls you for a place. And that place, you must take it in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible said in the book of Psalm 127, before we begin to pray, oh, like the Bible says in verse 1, it says, Except the Lord build the house. The labor in vain that build it, except the Lord keep the city. The watchmen wake it up, but in vain. Except the Lord build the house. So the people in Genesis 11, they started building a city and the house. They couldn't finish it, even though they have the resources. Because before they say, let us build it up, they knew how much they had. It's not by power, nor by might. It is by the spirit. You have to find out, is this the will of God concerning me? Is this the will of God concerning my nation? Is this the will of God concerning my family? Once we know all the other side of it, because in every prophecy, there's a blind spot. There's something you can never see. It might never be revealed to you in the whole of your lifetime. But the next generation will start to see that side. And maybe after that generation, another generation will see even the side that the, the other generation did not see. But it's the same prophecy. But God has seen the end from the beginning. He knew the end from the beginning. He told Abraham, your children shall be like the sands of the, of the earth and like the stars of the sky. Abraham never saw thousands of children, but we know that Jacob grew everywhere. Jacob had 12 sons that became 12 tribes that became a nation. And we talked about the, the son of Ishmael. Ishmael went and became nations of his own. And Keturah had five sons also. They have nations out of it. God told Abraham, you'll be father of many nations. So Abraham was carrying the nations of the earth in him, even though he has no child. And in his lifetime, he probably saw the five sons of Keturah, and, and Isaac and Ishmael. So maybe seven children. By this time he was old. What will he do with them? But generations come and go. Look at how the children of Abraham are all over the world. That's why we are called the sons of Abraham. By adoption, we also partake to the Abrahamic promise and the covenant of prosperity and long life. 
We are going to pray now. We are going to ask God to build you. Many of us have been trying to build ourselves. We have great education. We have all that it takes, but we have not been able to find something to commensurate what we know that we'll be able to take care of us. It's not by power, nor by mind. It is by the spirit, says the Lord. We may have all other side, we have covered it, but there are some things we can't see about ourselves. We must commit our ways unto the Lord for him to be established, for him to establish it in this land. The Bible says, commit your ways unto the Lord for he shall bring them to pass. Commit your ways unto the Lord for your thoughts shall be established. Your thoughts shall be established. God is the one that establishes a man, a woman. God is the one that makes us great. Whether you are young or old, the people, they had the ability to make name for themselves, but they couldn't. They said, let us make a name for ourselves. And God is begging somebody down the road, say, I will make your name great. You just follow me. And today we're talking about that man, Abraham. The people that wanted to build the tower, we don't know who they were. We just know that they were people. We don't even know their individual name, their families. We cannot trace anything back to them because it was about themselves. It was not about God. In taking territories, altar must be raised. A lot of people have raised altar not knowing how to fortify the altar. Altar has to be raised with the oil, which is the anointing. Altar must be raised with the blood, which is the blood of Jesus. The devil that still raised altar, even if you go to many of us that are coming from Africa, you can discover that they are, you can still see people erect altar and kill cattle and goods, and they are sitting down there dancing and drinking every time, calling their God. And you look at those things, sometimes it does not make sense, but those things work. There's a man in the book of Second Kings, the Bible called him the king of mob, and they had this big war against Israel, and the king was coming against Israel, and the first day Israel almost wiped them out. Because God said to the, to, the, to the king of Judah, I think Jehoshaphat, he said, kill every one of them. Don't let any man escape. And they were killing them. Their king now came the second day. And he looked and asked the people, say, what does the God of the Jews take? They told him his sacrifice. The man took his first son and the only son he had and put him on the wall in front of the Jews in the battlefield. And kill him there in that war. His son died, so he has no more heir of the throne. And the Bible said the Spirit of God came down, and God had the spirit of indignation on the children of Israel. And God told the king to withdraw and go back. They should not fight this country again. These are unbelievers. They knew that this battle, they have already been destroyed before the battle began. But the man knew that these people are not fighting by themselves. With all our armories and soldiers and all what we have, there is something that is fighting with them. What does their God take? And they told him blood. He killed his son in front of the Jews. The only son he had, he put him on the wall and killed him there. And the war ended. The Almighty God could not even allow the Jews to kill again. See, because this man have done this, don't fight him again. Let him be. Territory. Sometimes you can be very angry in the spirit. You raise an altar and put the blood of Jesus and put an offering in that altar. And God will come down. I'm telling you, how did Solomon become king? Even though it has been prophesied by letter, God has spoken to his father David, say Solomon will become the next king. Bathsheba was there when they said it, the mother of Solomon. And here comes Adonijah. The, the first son of David at that time, because Amnon has died, Absalom had died. So Adonijah was the third son, but he is now become the first son. And Solomon was way down there. There is no way by the Jewish tra tradition, by the culture of the land, that Solomon can become king. But when Adonijah had been celebrated and he has been crowned king, they didn't even invite Solomon. His father was even still sick. David was still lying in the bed dying and his son did not come to check him. He was just interested in the throne and it was his right. But Adonijah has taken it and all the princes of the earth was invited and kings came and celebrated him. And thank God for a woman that understands spiritual authority and territorial taking. 
he knew that that territory has been taken in the spirit, but something has to be done. And she went to the bedside of David and said, didn't you say that my son Solomon will be king after you? And David said, yes, but David couldn't do anything. David was already sick. He was like a vegetable, lying down there, counting his days. And the woman quickly called the prophet Nathan. And the prophet walked in. And he said, now the prophet is here. And immediately David called the prophet to anoint Solomon. So the, the coronation of Solomon was in the bedroom of David dying. But that was how he took that throne. And oil was poured upon Solomon. And his father spoke upon him. And the prophet prophesied. But now the battle will be, how can Solomon go back to Adonijah that is already occupying a throne and say, get out of that throne. I'm, good. I'm the next king. Oh, Lakata Sukataba. This Bible is deep. The Bible says in the book of First Chronicles, I think First Chronicles chapter 1, verse 6. Solomon went not to his brother, he went to the mountain Gabor, to the altar of David. Remember, God promised David, say, even if you commit sin, I will have mercy upon you. So the altar of David was a mercy altar. And Solomon went there in Gabor. And he killed 1,000 cattle that day. The blood was so much, the whole mountain was full of blood. And the Spirit of God came down. God came to him that night and said, what do you want me to do for you? And Solomon said, you have given me these people that is as the stars of the earth to rule. Now give me wisdom and understanding to be able to rule them. He was talking about being on the throne, why he has no throne. He can't even be let into the palace, talk less of sitting on that chair. His brother will kill him in a minute. The moment he said that, the Bible said, God said, because you have not asked for the death of your enemy, and you have asked for wisdom and understanding, say you have received it, but above all, you will be most wealthier than any king that have lived. And God began to rain blessings upon Solomon. When Solomon came down from the mountain, his brother has known that power has shifted in the spirit. The brother came and submitted to him. He never asked for that throne. The throne was given to him willfully. His brother came and made a deal with him and relinquished everything. And that was how Solomon sat on that throne, taking territories in the spirit. You don't take territories by coming to the street and talking about it, fighting in the street. Before you do the physical one, go back in the spirit and possess that land. Possess that job. Many of you, you have been troubled in your job. You can become the voice in that job without even saying a word. You raise an altar in that job and speak into the altar and give God an offering and say, this is what I want to happen in my job. The devil cannot say no. Let us pray. Rakuto Sakataba. Say, God, by the authority and the power, build my house. Bible says, except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it. Watch over my life, watch over my city, watch over my family, except the Lord watch over the city. The watchmen watch it, but in vain. Keep my life, O Lord, Father, build me up. Ah, in the name of Jesus, as I raise an altar concerning my family. A lot of us, we have been knowing that there's an altar that is against us, but we don't know what to do. Today, as you begin to raise an altar, that we carry the name of Jesus Christ. Every altar that has been speaking in your family, every day to your shrine, concussion, invocation that has spoken before shall begin to be destroyed shall be destroyed, shall be destroyed, shall be destroyed by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. God will begin to stand and fight for you. When Abraham raised that altar in Bethel and he raised one in Shechem, those altars spoke. It took 400 years. The children of Israel came back and took that land. The land has been paid for. They, their, father, their grandfather has possessed that land. It doesn't matter where they go, that land belongs to them. Many times we don't know what altar is, but you have to do it right and invoke the mystery. The Bible says when the devil brought war into heaven, 
Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, the Bible says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. They invoked the blood that was upon the throne of God, the blood upon the altar. When they invoked the mystery of that blood, the devil fell like lightning. Every power of throne and dominion, every territorial forces, atmospheric power that is against your life, as the altar of God is raising your house, is raising your job, is raising your family, you begin to take back that city, taking it for God. You are taking back your job for God. You are taking back your children. You are taking back your husband, your wife, Makaraba, whatever the devil has stolen against you. Get it back now by the authority and power in the name of Jesus. Enough of wishful prayers. Christians like to wish things to happen. Things don't happen, you make them happen. Today you stand your ground and begin to say, in the name of Jesus, I receive and I take back the territory of my family. You call your family name. I take back the territory of our city. Wherever you are living, where, the Bible says, where you, the soul of your foot shall tread upon, God has given it to you. It is yours. But you cannot just go in and walk and get it. You have to take it in battle. And the battle, you fight in the spirit. And you don't just fight, you go and consult with a higher power. Because we can fight fallen angels. What you do is you join your force with the force that is in heaven. The Bible says, he that cometh from above is above all. You sit in the third heaven, far above principalities and powers. And let the power of God begin to fight for you. Let the angels of God begin to fight for you. Let God be your battle axe, and you shall hold your peace. The Bible says, the Lord shall fight your battle. And you shall hold your peace. But you have to say what you want. Today, receive your family back. Your children. Your house. Receive. A lot of people have been in different cities, but the city have not accepted you. You have not been able to assimilate into the city, even though you have lived there for years. You have to take that city by force in the spirit. The Bible says some people don't know how to go to the city. They don't know how. Today, you know how to go to the city. When you get to the place, you take it by force. You lay the oil upon the land and you speak into that land and put an offering on it and invoke the mystery of the blood. Once you invoke the blood of Jesus Christ, that place he has been taken. You can call the whole city as we speak over Lebanon and the Gwinnett County and the state of Georgia. And we take it for Jesus Christ this year. As we take these territories, O Lord Father, our name shall begin to come out, not because of us, but God will use our voice. We use our call. God will begin to speak through us in this land, in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 54, verse 11. The Bible says, O oh, thou afflicted, tossed with tempest, not comforted. Behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors and lay thy foundation with sapphires. God is going to lay a new foundation in your life. Because we are toasted and we are afflicted also. He say, oh, thou, thou afflicted and toast with tempest and not comforted. We are not comforted by anybody. Behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors and lay thy foundation with sapphire. Ask God to begin to lay this new foundation in your life with sapphire, with precious stones, with fair colors. Let it be laid with gold and silver and bronze and diamond in the spirit that this foundation will be fortified. Let God lay it with sapphires. In the name of Jesus Christ. Micah chapter 7, verse 11. Micah 7, 11 says, In the day that thy walls are to be built, in the day shall the decree be far removed. Every decree that has been against you. Let it be far removed. Let it be far removed. Every decree of backwardness, decree of, of unfulfilled purpose, let it be far removed in my life. Let it be far removed in my family. Let it be far removed around my children, our members, our church, God's time assembly. Let it be far removed in your life. Today, we are taking territories for God, by the authority and the power. We speak into this land that the people that walk around this land, as we have spoken, they shall be receptive, they shall be vulnerable, they shall be open 
to hear the will of God, to hear the word of God, as we bring the word and take over the cities. Lord Makatara, the Bible says, my cities through prosperity shall it spread abroad. We are spreading into other territories. We are beginning to take the state of Georgia. By this power and the authority, we take America. Every force and powers that be, let the power of God override them, overtake them. We release the blood of Jesus Christ upon these lands. Thank you, Lord, for we know that you have done it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Last but not the least, Psalm 118, verse 22. The Bible says the stone that the builder refuse or reject is become the headstone of the corner. The stones that the builders rejected. You might have been rejected in your family, refused. You might have been abandoned, shamed. You will become the chief cornerstone because God has begun a new work in your life. The spirit of God is doing something great in you. And God is going to bring you to the place of advancement, the place of power, the place of oh, Labaga. God told Abraham, get out, I will make thy name great. God will begin to make your name great. I want us to read Genesis chapter 12, what God promised Abraham. Oh, Lakata si kataba, no shakataba. Makoto Sokotobo Rikata Shakataba. In the name of Jesus Christ, Genesis chapter 12. Are we there? If you look at verse, verse, verse 2, the Bible says, I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt become a blessing. We are going to pray that four prayers now. I will make thee a great nation. Every individual is a nation. Lord, make me a great nation. Make me a great nation. We are not going to make ourselves a great nation. Let God make us. Oh, la ba 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 ba. Lord, make me a great nation. Make me a great nation. Makaraba sikataba. Bless me with all blessings, both spiritual, physical, and supernatural blessings, divine blessings. Bless me, O Lord, for I say, I will bless you and make thy name great. Lord, make my name great. Make our name great. Make our name great. In the name of Jesus, in this land that you have given to us, we shall be great in the land. And above all, the last but not least, and thou shalt become a blessing. Lord, bless me so I can bless other men. I can bless them with information. Bless them with resources. Thou shalt become a blessing. We shall become channels. As we are connected to the source, which is God, we will be the source of blessing, the channel of blessing. God is the source. We are the channel. So blessings will pass through you and you'll be spreading it out. Blessing will come to you and you'll be spreading it out. Lord, help us to become a blessing to everyone that is out there that cares and that wants to be blessed. Anyone that is out there that needs to be healed. Anyone that is out there that needs to hear the word. Anyone that is out there that needs to prosper. Let us become this channel of blessing. That was what Abraham became. God said, and I will make thee thy name great and thou shalt become a blessing. A word from God has changed your life. Just one word. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for it is done now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want to pray with you here. If you, are, if you are here for the first time or you have been here before, but you have not given your life to Christ, I want you to know that all this will not be possible if you have not believed. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and if you believe in your heart that he died and resurrected for your sins, then you shall be saved. So I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus Christ, I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and Savior, and I believe in my heart that you died and resurrected for my sins. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. God bless you. I will see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus.